One day I went to work and my boss called me in for a meeting. And I thought it was a meeting for me to bring him up to speed with what has been happening. But by the end of that meeting, I was jobless. He told me the company has been restructuring and they've been thinking how to tell me, but there's no better way to tell me than to, sorry, Nikki, we have to let you go. And that hit me like a truck on high speed because I did not see retrenchment coming at all. It's quite an interesting story, and for those who really want to go into the depths of it, you can watch my TED Talk. But the reason I'm bringing this story up once again is to let you know that when I got retrenched, my mind started asking me questions after I made peace with the fact that, okay, this is my reality, this is my new reality. My mind went into curiosity mood and asked the questions, how do organizations continue to thrive when they let go so many people? Because in my case, when I, when I was retrained, I started hearing news about retrenchment. It's more like when you buy a car, you start seeing that particular mark of car everywhere. Anyone ever had that experience? So for me, because I've been retrained, when I turn on the TV, it's like the news on retrenchment jumps on me. On the radio, the news on retrenchment jumped on me. So it in, uh, impacted my curiosity, and I throw myself on the internet. How do organizations continue to thrive when they let go so many people? And that question led me into the path in which I am today. For the first time, I came across concepts like artificial intelligence. And I was like, oh, okay, so this is what is happening at the back end. Now, concepts or things that used to be done by humans can now be done by machines and softwares. I'm like, okay, I guess I can satisfy my curiosity in some way. Now I know how my boss is coping without me. I've been replaced by software. But what exactly is that? Up to that point of me being retrenched, I had no clue of what exactly is happening in the tech world. I did not identify myself as part of the tech world. The only technology I knew at the time would, would be to sit on my laptop, work, answer phone calls. That was it. There was nothing beyond that. And now I'm here right on the internet finding these things about disruption, technology, emerging trends that are changing the whole world of work, and I was clueless. And so many times when I talk about these things and they tell me, oh, Nikki, but we don't understand this technology. I'm not from the tech world. I'm not from the IT department. I'll tell you, you know what? If I could be able to do these things and learn these things on my own, anybody can do it. Because that era where technology was a topic for tech experts is over. That era where technology was for the IT department, it's over. Right now, if you are not putting yourself and trying to understand how is artificial intelligence impacting your work, your profession, your industry? If you are not asking yourself those key questions, you are going to be left behind. And so whether by chance or by circumstances or by your choice, your life is going to be disrupted. There is no neutral ground. There is no way you're going to say, I'll bury my head in the sand, hopefully I'll get up one morning and everything is over. Your life is going to be disrupted. And when I talk of disruption, Many people think of disruption only in terms of business. You know, new business models are coming to the marketplace, new apps, new emerging technologies that are coming up. And that is right, that is disruption. But if the marketplace is disrupting, and you and I are not disrupting ourselves to be in alignment with the market, then there is a mismatch, am I right? There is already a mismatch if that is what is happening. So disruption also happens at a personal level, where you ask yourself, do you have the relevant skills that can sustain you in the changing world of work? Do you have the relevant skills that can sustain you in the changing world of business? And when I talk about this thing, it's not about technology at all. It is not about your new apps, it's not about your new gadget, it's not about the latest iPhone, it's not all of that. It is about a new era, new ways of thinking, new skills and new ways of doing business. So when you transition from that mindset and you start thinking of it like, okay, this is entirely a new era, it doesn't matter whether I'm from the IT department or not. It doesn't matter if I'm a tech expert or not. When you transition into that mindset, then you are going to be relevant for the future. And I'll give a few quick steps on how you can actually transition to personally disrupt yourself. And it starts actually in the point from leadership within organizations that to understand that digital transformation starts with people, not technology. Because many organizations, they dive in tech first and completely leave the people behind. You have to understand that technology is easy. But people are complex, they are difficult. Once you program a particular technology, it gives you exactly what you want, am I right? But a colleague, they would have one behavior today, the next morning they will have another behavior. People are complex, so you have to understand that 
people, they are the center of your digital transformation. You need to first make sure that the people are on board and in line because a successful digital enterprise isn't a technological enterprise, but a confederation of people that are inspired and empowered by technology. And companies don't disrupt. I'll give you a quote from Whitney Johnson. And she said, businesses require disruptive people to be disruptive because a business is nothing more of offices, buildings, uh, sophisticated machineries, electronics, and all of that. But for it to function, people are required to breathe life into a company to achieve innovation and growth and productivity. Again, if a company dives in first, they are bound to fail. I mean, if they dive in tech first, they are bound to fail. And so, for you to be in alignment with where the world is going today, you need to be a lifelong learner. And one of my favorite quotes is from Alvin Toffler, and he said, the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. It therefore means that the idea of being illiterate is now being redefined. Before, it was about not going to school, but now it is about your ability to learn, unlearn, and relearn. And if you don't have that ability, you are considered the illiterate of the 21st century. And I know nobody wants to be considered like that. So anyone who stops learning is already outdated, whether you are 20 or 80. There are some people in the room, I've asked so many times, you don't have the time to do now, how many people are using chat GPT, how many people are exploring with tech, and normally they don't put their hands up. So you have to understand that you need to move. There are people with a wheelbarrow mindset. What do I mean by a wheelbarrow mindset? If you have had an experience with a wheelbarrow, when you push it and leave here, the next day you will come and find it exactly where you left it. So there are people with a wheelbarrow mindset that are not moving. They are waiting for their bosses to move them. They are waiting for their, uh, their, their parents to move them. They are waiting for their wife, their husband to move them. They are not taking initiative to make sure they are in line with where the world is going. Technology is happening. Artificial intelligence is happening. Digital disruption is happening. And they are sitting still and not moving themselves. So it is important that you let go of the wheelbarrow mindset and take initiative to develop your own self. Don't wait on your boss. Don't wait on anyone. Because when disruption happens, you might not be aware and you might not be willing. The last point, I may not be able to go through my presentation, all of it. But be a human being. Like I mentioned earlier, humans are complex. So the skills you need are not only about tech skills and technical skills, you need to understand how to deal with human beings. Because as the world is changing, the key skills of the future will be your ability to collaborate not just with technology, but with humans. Are you the type of person that when you stand, people feel like it's a robot talking to them? Can you relate at a human level? Those are important questions. And um, another important key thing is your ability or to adapt. So it is not the strongest of the species that will survive, not the most intelligent. It therefore means that there's a time where your intelligence will be mean nothing. It is your ability to adapt to change. And thank you for listening.